Hey yo, what's good YouTube? Welcome back to another tutorial video. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to edit your car photography. You know, how I do it, how I like to do it, show you some tips and tricks along the way. But anyway, without wasting any more time, let's get started. So we got Lightroom Classic, all right? This is all you want to use, Lightroom Classic. Don't use the new goofy setup that got going. That's just goofy. You got to use Lightroom Classic. Let me tell you, Lightroom Classic is where it's at. You know, there's photos I'd be achieving right here, dog. You don't get these photos anywhere else, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, I'm gonna show you guys how to edit photos like this because look at the uh, import. Actually, it's not, not that bad. And then look at the edit. That's pretty good, pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But anyways, let's get started with a new catalog. So this is gonna be called Super Cars in Livonia, which is, you know, there's some pretty cool supercars there. All right, so blank canvas right here. Let's import our photos now. So we're gonna go to file, and we're gonna go import photos and video. I don't even know why importing videos is even an option if you can't really edit them like that. But anyways, here's our photos. This is from my SD card. I moved them to a save right here. Look at all these files. So we got car photos. Let me see if I can find them. Oh wait, yeah, this is it. Ooh, who took these? <laughs> me. Anyways, these are old photos. They're not that that good. So we go to car photos, and then we look for S. We got supercars in Livonia. So out of all these cars, let's uncheck all. I'm gonna be doing the Porsche. It's a little simple edits right here. Nice little Porsche, and let's get these bad boys imported. So let me show you guys how I edit these photos. So first thing first, you guys wanna shoot in raw and stuff. Um, you know, because um, that's the reason. So I shoot in a 16 by nine crop ratio uh, for wallpaper reasons, right? But you can always uh, crop to original, just like that, and you're done. And you get way more view. So if you ever wanna crop for Instagram, you do the four by five and you get your little cropping ratio and it's a little wider so it can fit a better, you know, picture, I guess. But we're gonna keep this as original. We're gonna edit it like this. <laughs> So we got this photo and um, it's already pretty good from the start. And also, that's also another really good tip I would recommend is try to get your photo as best as possible from the start. Mess around with your white balances, all that stuff. If you want me to get further in depth, you guys can hit that like button. You know what I'm saying? Subscribe because I will be doing more photo videography tutorial stuff as well. But right now we're just getting with the editing. So we're gonna get started with this edit. So first thing first, the cropping. We gotta we gotta get this thing straight. So we're gonna rotate it. And rotate it to look straight. So you can see there is a little bit camber in the wheel, which kinda messes things a little bit. But we're gonna uh, it's a little too much. There we go. I think that looks pretty straight. Yes, sir. That's how we do it. So the name is a little cropped out, a little water, you know. Uh, we got some reflections going on here. Uh, uh, off, off the start, we got a, we got a pretty good photo, which is surprising. I don't have to uh, jump, adjust any temps or anything. The temperature here is perfect. But usually, I like to go for a warmer tone. If my pictures do end up a little colder, because you know I'm a dumbass and I forget to set my picture profiles or uh, not picture profiles, my white balances. Uh, you know. This happens, so I gotta adjust the warmth. But right now, the warmth is looking pretty good, so we're actually gonna keep it in like that. So, next thing I do, I go right here and I bump the highlights down and see what that changes. So, usually it affects the sky pretty pretty good and also affects the reflections of the car. Cause we're gonna worry about those reflections later. You don't want them just pure white like that. Uh, well, I don't want them like that, at least. It does look a little better, but we're not going to affect that. So we're actually not gonna even going to touch highlights. So this is what I'm talking about. This is this is where you got to take the perfect picture, you know, so you do as little as work as possible. You know, all, all the work that you want to put in in time and effort is getting the perfect picture. And then you can edit it as little as possible, you know. Well, that's how I roll. You know, I need to get these done quick, fast. And satisfy people. Well, mainly satisfy myself and my Instagram followers. I'm not really making any cash off of this, which uh, I don't really mind. I love I love shooting cars. But look at the detail in this. Jesus. 
Got a little bit of noise going, whatever. I learned to live with noise. That doesn't really bother me too much, especially with the size of these freaking photos. Anyways, I guess that's looking good. So now we're gonna see what the shadows do. I usually do bump the, the shadows a little bit because they bring out this. Like, see, look, when I take him off, you really didn't even look at the exhaust right here, but there we go. But when you bump up the shadows just a little bit, you get a lot more detail that comes right in. Like, look at this. You can even see those ridges or whatever that, that is inside. But you bump up a little bit, you get all these little details and stuff, especially here in the vents. Look at that. And I also bump the shadows up if they are too harsh. Usually when you have direct sunlight, uh, bumping the shadows up will help make it look softer. Because, uh, you know, the shadows aren't as sh like sharp and contrasty. Um, so that also helps out. But in this photo, we're not going to bump the shadows up because it also affects the environment. I would only bump up the shadows in post if it wouldn't affect the environment too much, but it does. I want the environment a little bit dark. I, I like the dark theme of this photo. So we're going to keep that as is because I'm actually surprised about how well I took this picture. Dude, this is going to be a bad tutorial. <laughs> Texture, uh, we usually don't touch. It does bring up all this cool stuff right here, but you can see what it does. You can see these little lines right here. You bump up the texture. Boom. Brings out the white lines. Brings out all that noise and stuff. Um, and whatnot. And it just doesn't really, like, you know, a lot of photographers go boom, boom, boom. Professionally edited photo. So you don't really don't want to do that. But we will use clarity eventually. Um, but texture is usually acceptable um what i like to do is get a little bit more detail in the gravel you can see how it's focused here so i'll put up the texture just a little bit brings out that detail that's really what i use it for is detail you get carbon fiber uh, let's see if there's an example yeah right here you get the texture you can bring out that carbon fiber boom just like that and all the out of focus stuff doesn't really seem to be getting affected so doing all good, carbon fiber, some cool stuff like that, vents, accentuate them a little bit more, lights, the little details and lights as you can see. Kind of brings them out a little bit, makes them look sharp, but makes it look more uh, professional, quote unquote. Uh, but yeah, makes it look nice. Uh, saturation, I usually sometimes do like to turn the saturation down, the colors are too harsh, especially with like bright red cars. <coughs> I kind of turn it down. Vibrance, I really don't really mess with it too much, but there's been some cases where I use vibrance just for the mood I was going with. It wasn't too sunny out, so I'm like, I might make it a darkish, you know, menacing photo. Usually I do that with like scat packs. <clears throat> you know, they seem like a menacing car because they do menacing shit. People who have those cars do menacing shit. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? And yeah, after that, I kind of really don't mess with this too much because you can do it here. You can see you got your shadows. You know? So I, I don't really mess with this too much. I know some people do, but personally me, I haven't seen any use. I haven't used it for anything really yet. So I don't I, I don't touch it. You guys can touch it if you know how to use it. Um, I also don't even know how to use it really that well. But here we go. The color grading tab. So you got your shadows right here. You can turn them down and stuff. I go for a little Las Vegas or movie looking thing. And this actually don't look too bad, that little blue. You got highlights, which I usually add yellows like this to the highlights. Not too much, like a little faint yellow when uh, it's a little, the reflections look a little too cold. <clears throat> and then you got your midtones here, which I really don't mess around with too much. But I actually don't look too bad. But uh, yeah, I will actually add some blue to my shadows. Here we go. And you can see that the, the oh, what the heck is going on here? Oh, these are my light ray presets. Uh, not really that best of like a set because um, you can't move them around. <laughs> but let's go to our history of this car. So you can see boom and boom. Just a little blue shadow adds hella, hella difference to this, this photo blue shadow and a warmer color goes crazy and i love that i love that look but i usually try not to overuse it so i don't you know bore myself with that look but we're gonna use it for this photo right here now let's get on to the little bit more 
advance this stuff right here masks <clears throat> jesus christ my voice today is not it so what i like to do with cars is i like to bring them out more just make them stand out make them look better so i go to masks uh, let me actually redo that for y'all so i go to masks and i click select subject now if you don't have this option uh update your premiere pro or not premiere pro update your lightroom because uh, the new Lightroom Classic does have this option. I think it's like 2021 or 2022. Whatever. New one, pretty much. So I just click straight up select subject. And there's a cool feature here, actually, that you can completely unselect people. If I can find it. And you go to subtract and then uh, people right here. Select people. Uh, no people found okay i guess i can't identify faces anyways <clears throat> if that doesn't work we're gonna have to do it manually so delete that oh whoops i i didn't mean to do that let's reselect subject so what i like to go in is i zoom in to 33 percent and then i click the I click this subtract and i do brush now i do want to have a little bit of feather on here and I get rid of all the on unwanted selections and just kind of erase them. Oh yeah, also don't forget to use auto mask because if you go over the edge like this, oh, I messed that up. If your uh, brush bleeds over like an, the edge of, I guess the car like this, it tends to keep this selected. So you get a more precise cut. Uh, and I think how it works is it sees the difference in sharpness. It sees, oh, this is more sharp than this so <clears throat> let's not deselect that and keep that original so we're just gonna go do a little bit of this i needed foot right here we don't want to affect that and then yeah i guess I'll, I'll make a little mistakes like this and stuff which can be oh, which can be later refined <clears throat> but that's all good that's no worries let's keep looking around i usually leave the shadows selected um Oh, that's gonna bother me right there. Hopefully, no one will notice. Look around the car. Oh, this is not needed to be selected. Erase that. So it looks like we got a pretty good job. Oh, there's this. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Get that out. Get the get out of there. And let's get around the headlight right here. Headlight and the spoiler. Perfect. This tool sometimes works great. Sometimes it's frustrating. <clears throat> okay, and there's a little bit. Ah, uh, that looks fine. Is this selected? All right, so now let's fix our little mistakes. So let's erase this part right here. Now let's fix our mistakes. We're gonna add brush and kind of go down. That didn't select what I needed. Add brush. Select all of this. Good enough, and then we're gonna go back here and select the rest of the car's body. Cause I noticed this wasn't really selected. Yeah, this wasn't selected at all. What the hell? I mean, it was, but not very well. Let's uh, make it a little easier on ourselves and kind of go over it like this. Let's go back to the subtract brush. Oh, I guess it doesn't work. Clean up the edges a little bit so we don't affect that. Honestly, you don't even gotta do this stuff. I just do it because, uh, you know, I guess uh, really I want my pictures to be good, as good as possible. You know what I'm saying? As good as I can in my ability, cur ability, ability currently. <clears throat> but anyways, once you got the subject selected right here, your favorite, my favorite tools to use is clarity and shadows boom sometimes i do adjust the highlights a little bit and exposures bring the car out a little bit but in this case that won't really work so mainly what we're going to do is we're going to mess around with shadows and we're going to mess around with jesus clarity so you can see what clarity does it brings out the car and makes it look more dramatic so clarity the most they usually run is a 50 
you want you don't really want to overdo it because when you overdo it uh, actually this don't even look bad man what's going on with this photo you don't really want to overdo it but I'm gonna run at 50 <laughs> give like that if that is too much I do always run to 30 but 50 looks pretty good with this and then you want to bring shadows because when you do bump the clarity up it kind of makes the shadows a little bit darker than they are so you got 40 here and then oh, I guess it kind of brings them out whatever we're gonna run 50 and then we're gonna bump up shadows a little bit now shadows you want to be careful you don't want to bump them up too much because when you bump them up like this the car like like this it looks like the car was kind of photoshopped into the scene so I usually run 20 here get start it with 20 let's see 25 25 does look pretty good let's try 30 30 does look good so the reason I bring up shadows is to get little details like this under the car you know like the tire exhaust vents cool stuff so boom we went from this to boom this i'm i'm saying that's a w right there and um that's pretty much how i edit usually all my photos actually let's fix the crop a little bit i don't feel like it's straight enough <sighs> so yeah that's pretty much the process i go through with editing all my photos and you can see how little work that took and i could have got this done in minutes you know not the length of the video because i did have to explain stuff but that's usually the process i take through my photos but you gotta remember you gotta have the first photo as good as possible the the raw photo that you took from your camera so if you guys do want a tutorial for that you know you can hit up the channel like the video up because i will probably work on that probably not because i got stuff going on like school and this so uh yeah well school's coming up i'm still at work currently but anyways if y'all like that you know you can uh, hit that sub you know that'd be greatly appreciated of course if you want i'm not forcing y'all and uh, also, if you guys do want to see these pictures, you can hit up the gram, which is going to be in the description. So you can come to the gram, you know, see the pictures, see my progress, scroll all the way down to when I first started photography about eight-ish months ago from now to now. I, I did not prove fairly great. I wouldn't say I'm the best, but and how long it took me to get to this point, uh, I'd say I'm pretty impressed with myself. Of course, maybe not to someone else who's been doing it for years or you know, has a little bit more talent than me. But let me tell you talent you know or skill does not beat talent you know what i'm saying i'm not a very talented person but skill wait talent does not beat skill that's the right answer <laughs> all right anyways i gotta go bro i'll see you later